What does it really take to build a fully custom, locally ran AI voice assistant? Not just a chat bot, but something with persistent long-term memory, smart home control, and the ability to learn new skills over time. Well, we're gonna find out. For the past few weeks now, you've seen me build different parts of this architecture from the, the NAS build with the self-hosted apps and then the AI server. And now I'm pulling back the curtain to show the whole grand plan. This is Cal's blueprint. And what is Cal? Cal is my Jarvis. And this diagram is the master plan. This shows everything from the wake word to the local LLM running on the AI server, to the self-hosted apps running on TrueNAS. And this is all working together as a single cohesive assistant. And in this video, I'm gonna go through piece by piece the architecture, the technology behind it, why I chose, what I did, and how it all fits together. And I'm sure there's gonna be people saying, hey, why didn't you use this framework or that model? And the reason's probably gonna be because I don't know better. I'm just learning this stuff. This is the blueprint, the architecture as it is today. There's always opportunity to improve. So I'm happy to hear people's comments, suggestions on how to make this better. And with that said, let's get into it. At its heart, a voice assistant is a pipeline. Audio comes in, it follows a path, it gets processed, and then it gets processed back out as audio back to the user. So let's follow that path, starting with the client. So it all starts on this client device. And for me, this is gonna be prototyped on a BeagleBone Black because I have one laying around. And it's about the same compute power, actually a bit less than a Raspberry Pi Zero Two. So I'm probably gonna buy one of those if it works on the BeagleBone and then add a audio hat on top of the, the Raspberry Pi. But all that's running on, on the client device are two things. We got the wake word detector and a live kit client. So the first step is the wake word detector. So all it's doing is listening for one thing. Hey Cal. So when the user over here, that's me, says hey Cal, it'll be picked up by the wake word detector. And in this case, it's Pico Voice Porcupine. And it's a specialized wake word model and you can train the model in the cloud. So you just go to the website and you can do this free and type in what you want the wake word to be. It'll train a model for you and you can download it for free. And then you can run it on a device, a low powered device like this. And that's the whole intent of Pico Voice is to run on low powered devices. So when the Pico Voice Porcupine voice detector, wake word detector, picks up Hey Cal, then it springs to action and it activates a live kit client. Now, if you haven't heard of live kit, it's an open source platform for real time audio and video communication. So think Zoom, but something you can host yourself and it's it's used quite often for setting up agents. So once that's detected, it activates the LiveKit client, which sets up a WebRTC stream back to the AI server over here. And we'll zoom out to see the whole thing. And this is the AI server I built in previous videos. So if you haven't seen those, go watch them. It's running Omachi Linux. It's actually what I'm displaying here uh, right now in this video, running an i7-10700 and an RTX 3060, the 12 gig uh, variant of that card. Now on this AI rig, the AI server, this is where all the magic happens, starting with the live kit server. And a big milestone in this project to where I've gotten to now is getting this out of the cloud because you can host uh, using live kits cloud services and it gives you a certain amount free and then you have to start paying for it but a big milestone was getting all of that running local on this machine here 
And the whole purpose of this live kit server is acting as a hub for all the audio coming in and out of Cal. And so you can set it up where you you have multiple clients connecting to the server, connecting to the same agent. But right now it's just going to be one client, one agent connected through LiveKit, where LiveKit's handling all that audio streaming. So coming out of the LiveKit server, the audio passes through two very important filters, the voice activity detection, the Solero VAD, and also a turn detection, and that's using the LiveKit multilingual model. And so the voice activity detection does just that. It detects when there's voice and not just other background noise. And the turn detection detects when you're done talking to say, okay, your turn is done. I'll now send the audio onto the speech to text and also send a, a signal to the LLM saying, now you can start processing the text. So it's kind of like hitting enter key in your LLM chat. And for the speech to text model, I'm using Faster Whisper, which is a, an open AI variant of Whisper. And it's meant to be just that super quick and run on low powered devices as well. And this is wrapped around a custom live kit plugin that I had to build in order to connect in with live kit. And so we can talk about that in another video if we want to do that. And so after the speech to text does its job, it comes out and feeds into the brain of Cal, the LLM. And for that, I'm running Olama locally, of course, and I'm using a Quen3 8B model, 8 billion parameters with a 16,000 uh, context window, 16,000 token context window. And in my previous video, I showed how to set up these models with different contexts and why that's important when you start feeding the model more uh, information and bigger prompts for it to not lose track of the conversation. You need to have a big enough context window, uh, not too big so that it doesn't fit in your VRAM and make things really slow, but just right fit for your needs to keep things snappy and quick, but give you enough context to uh, keep the LLM's wits about it. So this LLM doesn't just chat, it can do things. It has tools, it can help you. And there's two different tool pathways here that we can use uh, with the system that I've set up. So there's low latency tools, which are 6, 6A and 6B here. So there's custom Python tools built into the Python code itself. So things like web search. And then there's MCP tools. So this is connections to other servers that provide the LLM with tools. And the classic example here is Home Assistant. And we're connected to Home Assistant through this MCP connection. The other thing we're connected to through MCP is this long-term memory, the Memento SQLite graph memory. And I went through this connection in the previous video on how to set up the server and how to connect your AI tools to that MCP server to give your AI long-term memory. But these things specifically, you want to happen fairly quickly with low latency. When you say turn on the lights, you want it to happen as quickly as possible. When you're searching something from the memory, you want that to happen as quickly as possible. Or from the web, make that happen right now. So these are all low latency tools and they're all connected uh, directly into the Python of the agent. The other tool pathway is through N8N. And if you haven't heard of N8N, it's a tool, a locally run server that you can create workflows and you can create AI workflows, you can create other workflows and there's hundreds of connections that are pre-built in to N8N and it's drag and drop, no code configuration. Well, some code if you want to, and it's all very visual. And there's lots of examples out there of different workflows that you can set up. And we'll talk about N8N a bit more in a minute. So below the N8N and upstream of the Memento server is this conversation history, the rolling message window configuration. And this is Cal's short-term memory. So there's this rolling message window 
of about 10 messages that keeps rolling and it can keep conversation going for that long and remember what was said in the past 10 messages. You can make that longer or shorter depending uh, on the config setup. And then every 10 turns or five minutes, then a script is run where it'll go over that conversation, send the conversation to the LLM and decide if there's anything worthwhile remembering. If it's just turn the lights on, turn the TV on, then there's no sense remembering that. But if there's facts or preferences about people, places, devices, then it'll capture that in memory and use that information for a future context. So after each one of these tools returns a response, so a response from web search or from home assistant or from one of the N8N tools, it'll come back to the LLM for processing and turning it into a speech friendly manner and then return that text to the text-to-speech live kit plugin over here. And for that, I'm using Piper text-to-speech currently. The speed is really good, but the quality is just medium, I'd say. Um, I know there's higher quality text-to-speech models out there like Kokoro, uh, ChatTTS, XTTS, and I'm gonna look at implementing those ones because I do want a higher quality voice coming out of Cal. But for now, for prototyping and for the speed that this allows, this is working fine for now. And so that produces an audio stream back to the LiveKit server, which gets transported through the WebRTC audio stream to the LiveKit client, which then the client device plays the audio back to me, the user. So that's one full loop. So that's going to the LLM, to the tool calls, back to the user. But let's talk a bit more about N8N. So everything with Cal is local first and everything we've talked about up until now is all running local. From the speech to text, to the LLM, the LIMA model, the uh, text to speech and back again is all local. But it doesn't mean that Cal can't connect with cloud services. And so N8N is how that happens. And again, if you haven't heard of N8N, it's an open source automation platform. It allows you to create all these workflows of all these different services that are all built in and there's tons of examples out there. And N8N is the bridge for Cal to the outside world with cloud services and also the bridge to my true NAS and self-hosted apps. So if you haven't seen the videos where I set up the NAS server and all the, all the apps on that, go check that out. But this is how Cal can interact with those apps is through N8N. And the way that works is through these different web hooks. And so it's built into the Python code and within Cal's uh, LLM prompt that lists out all these different tools and these N8N workflows that when I say something like, hey, what's on the calendar tomorrow? Cal will fire off and trigger one of the N8N webhooks, which sends a signal to the N8N server to run this workflow to get events from Google Calendar. And that sends out to Google API, sends it back into the workflow. It gets formatted so that Cal can read it easy. And then it sends back to the LLM for processing. So super cool. You can set up whatever you want with this. I've got Google Calendar, Gmail, Notion, and those are all cloud services that it's interacting with right now. And what else we can do is set up interactions with our self-hosted app. So we have Sonar, we got Radar, we got JellySeer. We can send requests to JellySeer from Cal. We can query our databases. We can look at what's available on Sonar, on Radar, what books we have. So I have a few different plans with this, um, but the cool thing is you can just keep adding these workflows. So Cal can continuously learn new skills by just adding in these workflows in NAN. It's very modular, very user-friendly. I'm really excited about this. So that's really the quick overview and the high level view of Cal's architecture 
from the client device and the wake word detection through the live kit streaming server and how I'm utilizing Olama for the brain right now and the different tools that Cal has available from MCP tools and then the N8N webhook tools out to our cloud services and our self-hosted services. There's a lot of potential here. There's things I'm looking into like Langchain, which manages different agents and models so when it can assign uh, the right agent to the right problem. And also looking at Langflow, which is similar to N8N. And like I said, looking at different text-to-speech uh, models as well. So really curious what your thoughts are on this. If you have suggestions, please let me know. And otherwise, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.